Welcome to another episode of Life Chats and my name is Gabe Phillips and this is Mark Van Pletsen and we have the privilege of being pastors at an amazing church in Cape Town called Life Changes and as part of this uh, isolation, this lockdown time, we are putting these podcasts together and today's episode is entitled Help, I'm Struggling with Sinful Thoughts and, um, and I think it's prevalent yeah. to say that in isolation with more time on our hands or, or more separation from the everyday rhythms of life, temptation is knocking at the door yeah. probably more than ever. Um, and, and maybe in the area of sinful thoughts, uh, lustful thoughts, uh, our thoughts running away with us, going to places we know they shouldn't, how do we combat that? Uh, or maybe start off with us, Mark. Why, why would this be taking hold in our lives right now? Well, in the big story of the gospel throughout the word, we see God actually uses isolation powerfully, yeah. both for the ma making of his great leaders, the making of yeah. great men and women. He would isolate them at times in caves. David was in a cave. Many others went through these seasons. Moses in isolation in the desert. Others, he would use these moments of isolation. They would rise to it. But it also seems like isolation has the ability to pull us away from God, yeah. His people, His presence into ourselves, doing something of the Romans one where we, our thoughts become thoughts that aren't our thoughts. They're not yeah. His thoughts. Wow. They're the thoughts of this world. And so isolation has this impact and potential of great things, but also a journey of navigating where our thoughts go down these sinful roads and thinking things. Actually, we'd catch ourselves going, wow, what's going on there, yeah. you know? I think it's so true. You mentioned there David, one of those leaders, and there's yeah. this profound scripture that's in, 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 I think it's in 2 Samuel, if memory serves me correct, where it says, in the springtime, when kings went to war, David stayed at home. Yeah. And the consequences of David not going to war, not doing his duty, what he was called to, him staying at home led to sexual sin with yeah. Bathsheba. Now we're in a situation where we have to stay at home. I mean, the uh, radical thing about that? that is, I mean, I don't know if we see too much evidence in his journey to that point that that had been a battle. Wow, yeah. And all of a sudden, he's pulled off the front lines. And maybe many of our viewers, you've felt like you've been pulled off the front lines of your yeah. life, your business, the work that you do daily, not getting up. The rhythms are different. You've been yeah. pulled back of the front lines. And many are working, so we don't want to make the assumption that everyone's at home. Sure. Many are working longer hours than normal. But there's a whole bunch of people who are at home. And actually, the purpose of the day that is normally in front of him has been taken away. Yeah. All of a sudden, David's not on the front lines. He's chilling at home. He's sitting on the veranda. He's looking out. There she is. She is beautiful. And his mind starts scheming. And the scheme leads to actually, ultimately, a great adultery, death, yeah. the birth of a child in that process. Like a whole bunch yeah. of mess actually underpinned by his mind going to this sexual thought based on a lie that yeah. actually that would be better. Then if I were to take a hold of what God has called me to at this time. And that's what I think the enemy always does. He sells us, all, all of sin is underpinned by a lie. And yeah, it's it's a, lie. it starts off by saying it's just a look, it's just a glance, it's just yeah. this, it's just that. And we rationalize it. Yeah. But as you mentioned there, I think all sin leads to death. Uh, yeah. Wherever, how small it is. And I think that is the reality in that narrative. Yeah. But in our lives as well. No, and it's real. I mean, we are here and we're navigating. We navigate this thing. We say the yeah. grace of God is just greater. It's more powerful yeah. and more amazing. But we are all forced to navigate these things. And yeah. the reality is isolation forces the one or two. One, we keep getting fashioned under the pressure um, like an olive oil that gets pressed out of yeah. olives under time of pressure. Or we succumb to the things we give our minds to. And I would say the diets we give ourselves wow. to. Wow, yeah. I think that's so huge because actually I think we're, if we're just living on the, the diet of saying no, 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 we, our willpower is not that strong. Yeah. And I think that's what you mentioned there. We have to give ourselves to a diet of actually what are we consuming? What are we yeah. feeding in our lives? Yeah. Um, what are some of those things that we should be giving ourselves to at this time? Do you think? Yeah, I mean, I've loved the social media, all the lingo about the the chow down and the, uh, all these things. It's not the lockdown, it's the chow down, yeah. how the fridge is calling. And I've experienced that myself. So diet is a big thing. Yeah. And we're giving a lot of attention to our physical diet. And some people are posting. I love the one about, hey, haven't touched wine, haven't touched cheese, haven't touched cream. Um, but whoever that was, well done to them. That's not me. Yeah. Uh, but actually diets are important. And we get to fashion our diets, yeah, our sure. physical food diet, but also our spiritual diet. I would say isolation and actually sinful thoughts primarily are not an issue of physical or isolation. They are spiritual realities that yeah. we have to navigate. Yeah. So we need to make sure that we have our spiritual diet in place Very good. because lust is also a diet. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, it starts off with a small attraction. You realize you have a taste for it because we have a taste for these things. And then it grows and it becomes an appetite that drives your behavior. Yeah. And all of a sudden, rather than just walking past the fridge of lust, you're in there, you're feasting yeah. on it 10 times a day. And uh, you get back, turn around, you go, how did that happen? Well, lust is the same. Yeah. And, and we are majoring on sinful Sin, uh, sexual sin here, but there are many other ways. Sure. Maybe people at home and they're never getting for unforgiveness. They're never getting a whole bunch yeah. of things. We just want to make sure and we speak into this issue because here's the thing. If you're married, you're not safe from it. Yeah, if you good. are, if you've been perfectly safe from it until this point, it doesn't mean that your journey forward, you're yeah. isolated from that. Absolutely. And we all have cracks. We all have weaknesses. We're all human yeah. and navigating these temptations. And there is an enemy who wants to Rob, kill, and destroy. Yeah. And so we have to have our game on. So maybe some practical things you married, uh, you mentioned different uh, groups, yeah. um, married people, single people. Uh, what would you say to married people? What, what sort of uh, things should we be giving ourselves to at this time? I'm setting you up, Mark. Just to tell You're us. setting me up. Thank tell you. Us the good news, I Mark. honestly think <laughs> that we live in an age of sexual hyperbole where sex is everything. Yeah. But in marriage, sex is glorious. So that's what I want to tell you. Our, our sex is a great gift. And yeah. whatever you're hearing, maybe you think I'm listening to these Christian pastors. They're talking about sex. It's going to be boring. I want to speak to the married people right now. Maximize the moment. I'm Come being on. serious. You're at home a lot, maybe. You, if you're not working, you're at home together. Yeah. Don't just let the kids not operating the homeschooling well and the, the pressures. Don't let those be the whole yeah. story. Maximize the moment. Take time out for your marriage. Invest in intimacy in your marriage Beautiful. at this time and enjoy it. And have conversations like, you know what? We've been pretty average there. Yeah. Like, let's have a go. Let's, let's become better. <laughs> let's talk a lot. Let's fight for intimacy. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of sex and marriage being unbelievable and the world saying, that's something I want. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, that's in huge. this era of appetite, we're saying, I want that. Yeah. Well, let our Christian marriages be something that the world looks at in the area of intimacy and sex and say, I want that. Yeah. And I think if you're single uh, and you yeah. navigate that journey as well, say yes to greater pleasures at this time. Say yes to community. Yeah. Say yes to friendships and developing those things. The enemy will love to isolate you at this time, but actually use this time to press into him, press into his word. I think we got to actually, our, our yes will fuel our no. Yeah. I, I love 1 Peter. Sorry, Gabs. No, 1 Peter 2. God has given us everything yeah, for life and godliness. He's yeah. given us everything. And you're at home saying, but I'm fighting this trial. I'm at home alone. I have five or four days and there are people who will chat with me online or whatever that stuff is that is luring you in. I'm not saying there's no lure there. That's not what I'm saying. I'm yeah. saying there's a greater temptation. It's oh, yeah. to be in love with Jesus. Come it's on. to give your attention to him and to tuck into the grace of God at this yeah, time so and know that if you will allow God in this time to fashion, he will fashion something beautiful in and through your story and your life and love give it. you a victory story at the end of this temptation. I, 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 not temptation, this lockdown. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the reality is we're all it's waiting synonymous. for the lockdown <laughs> day it ends yeah. and there's funny memes going around about what will happen yeah. on the day lockdown comes to end i want to come out healthy i want to come out uh, in where god has done stuff in my life i want to come out where i've encountered the king of kings even in isolation and i'm not isolated so let me just say to our single folk and those who are maybe isolated and have been isolated alone we are praying for you we are thinking of but reach out yeah so Gabe's talking about community and maybe you're going, well, how? Well, reach out, jump into Life Group Lives, jump into Zoom groups, make yourself available to be a part of the Very story good. and the solution at this time and keep yourself busy. Yeah. Uh, that's the other thing. Don't just, thing. like the ways, the world is different and what's normal in the world, if you're going to invest in 12 hours of Netflix a day, your mind will start going yeah. down the direction of this is normal. So good. I'm just saying, I like a Netflix binge. If I'm, I've watched Band of Brothers. That's what we did. But, um, but fortunately, there's not a lot of sex and there's just a whole bunch of gun shooting, which in our house has become the normal with the uh, play, play guns. Did, yeah. but, um, but actually, if you're going to feed your soul that stuff, your soul will start going there. Sure. And I think that's what I'm trying to say. No, I think it's huge. So firstly, we're saying make your yes more powerful than your no, because if, if you're just saying no, you're going to struggle. You've got to be feeding your soul on the good things. Mark alluded to the next thing that I think if you're in the grip of temptation, the, we really believe that confession breaks the obsession. Yeah. Don't do this alone. Actually reach out. The Bible says it's, it couldn't be more plain than saying actually confess your sins one to another. 
actually sounds like a, a good preach. You should preach it sometime. I, I think we have a few times, <laughs> but um, but I just think it's an important thing. It's it's never grows old. That actually confession is a gift to us. Yeah. It's actually not saying it's actually not just saying that I'm I'm, I'm sucking or I'm failing. Confession is declaring that actually His grace is enough for me. You believing that His grace. Uh, maybe there's there something else that you would push us towards, Mark. A greater yes, maybe confession. I, I think also there's repentance has got such a bad gig. Yeah. In, in the church and in the world, repentance is this beat yourself and, and do everything correctly and then you have repented. Repentance is not that. Repentance is I was pursuing this journey. I was going down a journey of pursuing brokenness and sexual sin and these lusts that are driving me in a direction. And I'm going to change my direction and I'm going to take that direction to Jesus. And that direction brings freedom and life. It's, it's a change of thinking. Yeah. It's a surrender to God. And then what happens, I promise you on first degree of turn, the grace of God starts coming. On the second degree of turning, the grace of God yeah. starts pouring in more than we could ever imagine. And the ability to yeah. then do it comes with that. I think it's so huge. I think as we wrap up this conversation, we realize that this is a big thing. This yeah. is not something just to be flippant about. We realize that actually this is, might not be easy, but, but God is for you. He is not against you. He, he wants to walk into victory. Yeah. There's, the Bible is clear. There's no temptation that takes hold of you that Christ has not provided a way out. Yeah. You're not a victim. You're not just a sum total of your sexuality. You are a spiritual being. Yeah. That is, you're primarily a spiritual being in His hands. And His grace is more than enough. So say yes yeah. and, and to the grace of God and, and it'll, it'll empower your nose. Confession breaks obsession. Uh, I just think this, this thing of repentance, Mark says, posture your hearts in repentance towards Him. He is faithful and just yeah. to not just forgive you, but actually to empower you. And I think, as you said, Mark, we, we have got the potential of coming out of this lockdown stronger yeah. and uh, having slain some giants. Come on. But I'd love to pray. That's yeah. cool. I know it's a little bit different sometimes to some other things, but... I love the quote that Abraham Caper says, there is not a square inch yeah. of all humanity over which Christ does not shout, yeah. mine. Come on. And over your sexuality, over your story right now, over your struggles and your wrestles, there is a king who is able, who is powerful, who is shouting mine. Yeah. So I want to pray for us now, if that's yeah. all right. Jesus, Father, Holy Spirit, we come now. And I lift up every person who's there, the married people, the single yeah. people, those who are wrestling little appetites that are flaring up or those who are wrestling full-blown addiction that is controlling their every step. And I pray, God, let your grace yeah. invade that Jesus. place right now. I thank you that we can't do it alone. We need you and it's your blood. We've just celebrated Easter and the victory of the cross. I thank you for victories today over sexual sin, thoughts, directions and lives right now. And I pray, would you come near to those who are fighting this isolation journey, sitting on the verandas of their life and looking out. And the enemy will, he will put things in our way that will pull us in other directions. I pray, Spirit of God, would you come by your grace and your power and lead us as we surrender to the good shepherd in our lives at this time. I pray for those right now who need freedom. And I pray right now by the blood of Jesus that never fails. Your freedom, your life, and your victory come now. Yeah. Come, come now. In Jesus name. We thank you that we can declare this. Release this now. We praise you, God. Amen. Amen. If you are struggling, reach out. Yeah. Maybe say, well, I don't know who to reach out to. Well, reach out to us. Contact our care line, on, go on our websites, go on our details. We have a whole bunch of people yeah. who are just great counselors. Your details will be kept confidential and the journey will be a helpful one towards life and godliness and everything he has for you at this time. Don't do it alone. Be encouraged. God is for you. Yeah. And we'd love to see you soon. Yeah.